Turning to today's news headlines, Governor Tony Evers' administration is now taking steps toward creating restrictions on both manure and fertilizer in areas prone to nitrate contamination. The Department of Natural Resources says the move could cost farmers as much as $5 million annually at a time when the industry is already struggling with low milk prices and trade wars. Last year, the DNR imposed manure restrictions in 15 northeastern Wisconsin counties in response to drinking water contamination. The department has now developed an outline for an administrative rule imposing similar restrictions in sensitive areas across the state with permeable soils. We also have an update now on the proposal to build a shared manure digester in Wrightstown. Before possible construction can begin, BC Organics has to acquire 12 permits. Five of those are coming from the Wisconsin DNR. Supporters of the project say it will save farmers money, create jobs, and generate revenue. Citizens have voiced concerns, though, including a potential increase in traffic, health and safety issues, and some do even worry about the value of their property decreasing. The town took all of their questions in consideration, and they're currently comparing their notes to the DNR's report on this proposed $60 million facility. The DNR report will be reviewed. And then uh, we will, you know, review it, discuss it, talk about it, talk about the conditions. If there's any little changes that have to be made, we'll make the changes. And then at that time, with that conditional use uh, developed, then we will either recommend it to the town board or tell them not to, that we'll deny it. And the town's planning commission will be making that decision on this coming Monday. $3 million might be on the way to help farmers deal with stress. The Appropriations Committee is assigning more money to the Farmers First program. I had the chance to chat with one of the authors, Senator Tammy Baldwin, about the impact and how the money would be used here in our state. Being a farmer can be um, somewhat an isolated activity, uh, depending on what kind of farmer you are, et cetera. Um, and so uh, it's very, very hard work, and you don't always get off the farm to, um, to have other people around you um, know that you're dealing with stress and anxiety. Uh, and so one of the things it does is, is help train uh, lay people, uh, I mean, lay people from the sense of, of not necessarily being mental health um, experts, but people who are going to see uh, dairy farmers and other farmers on a routine basis or talk to them or be in contact with them to recognize the signs of stress, to recognize the signs of anxiety and uh, depression and suicidal uh, uh, ideation. And then um, make sure that those individuals are equipped with uh, the resources to uh, refer uh, folks to um, so that uh, we don't hear about um, you know, things when it's too late. The recent rains have now created a problem for orchards in the area. Apple counts are down, and if the water and weather doesn't shape up, it could delay the season even further. Local 5's John Dommel takes us to an orchard. Season has been a challenging one to say the least, and every farmer's in the same boat. It's been a cooler summer, and the coolness has a cost. Now everybody's hoping that we don't get a frost, we get a late frost, because you know by the time everything matures, the same with apples, it's two weeks behind schedule. Apple counts at Hofacker's Hillside Orchard are down by about 25%. You can go ahead and pick a red apple, but the taste might not be there. The summer heat just hasn't been there, and that's affected the growing season for more than just apples. It's all due to the effects of the weather. I mean, you need to have so many growing degree days for corn, apples, whatever you're growing, and we just didn't have that growing degree days. The warmer 70 to 80 degree weather this week is helping, but these guys need to go to work and they won't buzz about without some warmth and sunshine. People don't understand, without bees, you don't get apples, you don't get corn, you don't get alfalfa. There's a lot of things connected to pollination. A slow start for sure, but it's not all doom and gloom. We'll have apples, it's just gonna be a little later. We'll have pumpkins, they're just gonna be a little later. And you know, when you go on in there, and if your variety's not ready, you know, go pick another variety. You know, that we can't control mother nature. Reporting in Appleton, John Dommel, Local 5 News.